everyone. Nice to see you today. You can hear me now. Good. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm the minister for the Uniting Church here in Orange. Uh, very welcome to all of you today, whether you're here regularly, whether you're watching online, whether you're here from Kinross Wallaroy School. And um, just for, for information for those who maybe haven't gathered, what we have today is members of Douglas House from Kinross Wallaroy Junior School here with us. Uh, one service each term, we have one of the houses from the junior school come here and, and join us because we're all part of the same family, Uniting Church, um, Uniting Church School. And just for interest as I'm talking about it, any of you children in the front row recognize what's in that stained glass window there? That's your school, isn't it? That's right. So, Andrew, I was in Douglas. Ah, that's right. So Barbara there and Helen. Barbara and how many years ago? 60 years ago, those two women there were in Douglas House, back in PLC, if you know where that is, the, up, on, up on Coronation Drive. Um, and so, yeah, that's Wallaroy. So this church was linked to the boys' school back in those days. And one of our other churches, which is closed now, St. John's, was linked to the Presbyterian School. And Douglas comes from the Presbyterian School. So, welcome. And nice to have you here today. And as we come, I just want to remind you that your story is a part of God's story. And so we're joining together as the people of God, and we celebrate who we are in Christ, ready to share God's love with everyone we meet, knowing that each one of us is God's treasured possession. We're going to have our acknowledgement of country now, and George is going to come and bring that for us. This land is God's land. God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the Wiradjuri people, traditional custodians of this land, under God. We commit ourselves again to work for working for reconciliation in this land. Thanks, George. Okay, so to begin, on this table here, on our communion table, I have some ordinary everyday objects, aside from all the other special stuff that's here. I have a Pyrex jug from the kitchen. I have a pen, one of those ones with the, well, it's only got two colors on it, this one, but where you can select your color for some bread rolls, a coat hanger. Where's this going, exactly? I have a candle, another candle. I have some little pebbles, and I have a rock. This rock is from a place called Bing. If you've ever heard of Bing, not Bing Street, but Bing, which is out of town a little bit. Now, here's something simple, and it will all become clear while we're doing this. Would anybody like to come and choose one of these things and tell us briefly in about 10 seconds, so very brief, a story, a time of when you used one of these? Um, your hand was first. I think your name's Elizabeth, isn't it? And yes, yeah, so choose any of these things and tell us a little something about one time that you used one, had one. Um, the bread rolls. Yes. Um, once when we had a sausage sizzle at school and we all got to have like a sausage on one of these bread rolls. Perfect. Thank you. Simple, isn't it? Anyone else like a go? Well done. Yes. And what's your name? Oh, Sam. Hi, Sam. Choose one of these things. Um, Hold the mic up. Yeah. This Pyrex job, when my sister like makes a cake or something, I see her using one of these. Very good. Do you ever get to lick it up at the end? Yes. yes. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. Anyone else? Doesn't need to be a child. It could be. An, you want to come up? No. You're waving at. You just can be an adult. Bev, come on up. Yeah, and you can come as well if you want. I'll choose the rocks because at Spring Hill School a few weeks ago in Scripture, everybody had a rock to hold to symbolise a prayer. Hmm. Thanks, Bev. Yep, come on up. So, what's your name? Uh, Peter. Hi, Peter. Okay, and then we've got one more after you, I think. 
This is a particularly important piece of rock. It could be a piece of sedimentary rock. It could be a bit of weathered basalt. I'd go for weathered basalt. The area around this area is particularly fertile, largely due to the basalt seam that flows through here. Weathered, it becomes very good agricultural country. Thanks, Peter. What's, what's your line of work, expertise? Retired teacher. Retired and tutor. OK, very good. <laughs> Last one. And what's your name? Uh, my name is Sue. Hi, Sue. I happen to uh, use this one this morning while the sun is out. And then, yeah, hopefully um, uh, all the clothes will be dry for tomorrow because uh, otherwise uh, my boy, Benjamin, he wouldn't have any uh, uniform to wear tomorrow. <laughs> right, back to school. Thank you. So all of these things which are quite ordinary have a way of becoming part of our story, don't they? So the bread is part of Elizabeth's story. For Sam, we heard about the Pyrex jug. I'm going to start forgetting names in a minute. Uh, Bev spoke about the stones. Peter, the rock. Sue, the coat hanger. Was there anyone else? Who have I missed anyone? Um, so they become part of our story. And sometimes the things that become part of our story are very simple. And sometimes they can be really quite profound and deep. Today, we're thinking a little bit about how our story and God's story get caught up together, how they get linked, and how sometimes the simple things and the really amazing God things all are actually part of, a, part of our story and part of how we share who we are and how we know God and all of that. Thanks for sharing just now. Okay, we're going to sing our first song today. This one is called In Christ Alone. And um, the words will be on the screen. If you don't know it, please join in as soon as you can. If you do know it, sing out loud. And we will I invite you to stand as you are able. If sitting is more comfortable for you, please uh, remain seated. That's fine. <laughs>
And Grace and Mackenzie are going to come now and read for us our opening prayer. Eternal God, we have heard your story, read your story, felt your story. As we gather in worship, may we know deep within us that your story lives on and that your story involves us and is woven through the history of time with us as a part of it. And <laughs> Amazing God, your story is written on paper, etched in our minds and on our hearts, played out in our living and our loving and displayed in this and in displayed in our words and our deeds we adore you and we want others to do the same but first they need to hear your story and how your story touches your story we want others to know as we to know you as we know you to be amazed as we are amazed too to adore you as we adore you we know you love each and every person. May telling our story reveal the truth of those we meet and greet in every part of our lives. May our story resound with, with praise and adoration for you are the God we adore. Forgive us, Creator God, if our story is not as you want it to be, if it is careless or dishonoured if dishonest, if it is littered with mistakes, if it gives the wrong impression of who you are. Forgive us if our story does not really reveal the love, care and compassion you have for all people. Forgive us if our story stops coming to know you or to find you in restoration, forgiveness and new life. Forgive us if our story doesn't impress how much your story matters to us. As long as we live, may our stories be a vehicle for your never-ending love. Amen. Well, time now just to continue our welcome and our announcements. So, as I've already said, welcome to everyone who's here today. Uh, and maybe you're not here as, as a regular or not here as part of the school gathering. And if you're here just a newcomer for the first time, you're very welcome as well. There are some newsletters and things on the front porch. I hope everyone's had a chance to pick up and read a little bit about what we're doing. Some of the things that we do here at this church, um, because we're right in the center of town, we do like to be involved in the community. And so last night we, as we do every Saturday night, we handed out how many hot meals, Jenny? 126. 126 meals. I'm sorry? It was a bit cold last night. A bit cold, kept people away. So, so normally we average about 140 to 150 meals a week we give out here on a Saturday night. Um, always looking for volunteers, either those who want to cook or those who just want to be a part of the team, um, handing it out and serving up or clearing up. So. Uh, that woman there, Jenny, who just spoke is the person to talk to if you're interested in getting involved. Um, lots of other things we do, but just we like to share about that one particularly. It's such, a, such an important thing going. Um, so many people that we don't always realize are struggling. So I uh, just wanted to share that. And we do have good support from the school with that as well in relation to the desserts that are cooked by the senior school students every week. And um, we have boarders who come and help us every week as well. So it's very much a team effort. I heard that two of our girls made their guide promise this week, is that right? Serafina? Yes? Aurelia, Aurelia sorry, I was got names wrong there. Aurelia did, and Tilly did. I don't think Tilly's here yet, but congratulations to you making your guide promise. Um, that's, they're part of the girl guides, and so that's an exciting step for them. Anything else we want to be sharing today? Um, are there any birthdays this weekend or this week or last week? Because we always like to sing happy birthday. Yes? Owen. Owen's, Owen's birthday. What date's your birthday, Owen? I should know this by now. 
Last week, okay. And your birthday? Is it Grace? Grace on the 12th of June. Gabriel too. Gabriel. Gabriel as well. And it was Cassie's birthday on Friday. I know that because Cassie was born um, exactly five days before me, which gives away that my birthday is tomorrow. Um, so, so maybe I think her birthday was Thursday, actually. Uh, so um, there's a few birthdays. Let's sing happy birthday to everyone whose birthday it is. Very good. Is there anything else we need to be sharing today? Anyone from the congregation? Yep. Come on up, Chris. No, I'm not going to play a song. <laughs> I'll just raise that. Today at the Conservatorium, the Youth Orchestra will be doing a concert this afternoon at 3 p.m. And one of our Year 12 students at Kinross, music student, Zach Annette, will be playing a concerto, a French horn concerto. So you're all welcome to come along and support Zach. Thank you. Thank you. And is he one of your students? No. No. Yes. His mother <laughs> teaches him. <laughs> she teaches horn at the Kinross School as well. Okay. Chris, what do you teach then? I teach trumpet and a little bit of trombone. And one of my students is here, Will. Put your hand up, Will. There you are. <laughs> Good. Our stories are all intertwined, aren't they? Come on up, Bev. I hesitated to share this one because it's a bit close, but um, you all heard about the accident in Molong a week or so ago. Christy, the mum who was killed, used to be one of our wiggling wombat mums, and her girls used to come to wombats. So her funeral is on Thursday at Mylong Baptist. So please pray for her, for all those children. Thanks for sharing that, Bev. Um, just in relation to our own congregation, um, some of you will have heard that Jock Fraser, who's been a member of our congregation, he uh, passed away this week. Uh, Jock's had a struggle with um, ill health for a little while. So his funeral will take place here in this church Monday week, tomorrow week, at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, it will be read, led by the Reverend Daryl McCulloch, who's the chaplain at one time. I'm going to be on leave, unfortunately, so I won't be able to lead that service. And this coming Wednesday, we have a funeral here for Elaine Young. don't know if anyone, some of you know Elaine Young. I think she was a part of this church a number of years ago. So her funeral is taking place here on Wednesday. And then a memorial service in March Church on Thursday for um, didn't have a, Beryl Hicks's brother Joshua, um, who, who also would have come to this church on occasion and more regularly at Forest Reef. So that memorial is taking place on, on Thursday. Oh, and Josh, our pastor, who isn't here today because they're away for a wedding. Uh, Josh is our community pastor. Um, he just wanted me to let you all know about a tent city that we're planning to do on the front lawn for homelessness week. And that's where uh, it's still to be firmed up exactly what it's going to look like. But on our front lawn out there, people spending a night around there. Um, I don't know if it's just a night. It might be more. Bev, you might know more about it than me. But um, whatever. It, it's going to happen I, uh, sometime later in August. First week of August. First week of August. Homelessness Week, and it's about raising awareness uh, on the homelessness issue, and we um, encourage lots of people to get involved. If you run a business and you want to put up a tent and be part of it to raise some knowledge, if you're just a family who wants to come along and support it, bring a tent, come along, and uh, we'll be a part of that. And in relation to one of our, in relation to that, um, this church, and our, this is an update for our congregation as well, we are planning to convert our kindergarten hall, which is where our Sunday school currently meets into temporary accommodation, seven rooms, and we'll work with the Department of Communities and Justice to provide some accommodation for people who need short-term accommodation. Our development application hopefully will go in this week for that, so we're, we're getting closer. Um, please do, again, think about, think about those things and support us with prayer or in other ways as you can. Right, there's a lot of notices today. Um, we're going to hear some Bible readings now, so Samuel... 
and Elizabeth, so I think Samuel's reading the Old Testament reading, and then Elizabeth, the, Ma- the Gospel. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 7, verse 15 to 17, and chapter 21, 1 to 7. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God all-powerful. If you obey me and always do right, I will keep my solemn promise to you and give you more than sentence and can be counted. Abram bowed his with his face. Abram bowed with his face to the ground, and God said, "I promise that you will be the father of many nations. So I am changing your name from Abram to Abraham. I will give you lots of descendants, and they will become great nations. Some of them will even be kings." I will always keep the promise I have made to you and your descendants, because I am your God and their God. Abraham bowed his face. Um, Abraham, from now on your wife's name will be Sarah, instead of Sarai. I will bless her, and you you have a son by her. She will become mother of nations, and some of her descendants will even be kings. Abraham bowed with his face to the ground and thought, I am almost 100 years old. How can I become a father? And Sarah is 90. How can she have a child? So he started laughing. The Lord was good to Sarah and kept his promise. Although Abraham was very old, Sarah had a son exactly at the time God had said, Abraham, Abraham named him son, Isaac. And when the boy was eight, years, eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, just as, just as God had commanded. Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born, and Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and now everyone will laugh with me. Who would have dared to tell me Abraham, who would have dared to tell Abraham that someday I would have a child, but in his old age? I have given him a son. Matthew chapter 9 and 10 verses 35 to 8. Jesus went to every town and village. He taught in their synagogues and preached the good news of of God's kingdom. Jesus also healed every kind of disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them. They were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, A large crop is in the fields, but there are only a few workers. Ask the Lord in charge of the harvest to send out workers to bring it in. Jesus called together his twelve disciples. He gave them the power to force out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and sickness. The first of the twelve apostles was Simon, better known as Peter. His brother Andrew was an apostle. So were James and John, the two sons of Zebedee. Philip, Bartholomew and Thomas, I mean Thomas, Matthew the tax collector and James the son of Alphaeus, of Alphaeus and the Deus were also apostles. The others were Simon, known as the Eager One, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions. Stay away from the Gentiles and don't go to any Samaritan town. Go only to the people of Israel because they are like a flock of lost sheep. As you go, announce that the kingdom of heaven will soon be here. Heal the sick, raise the dead to life, heal people who have leprosy and force out demons. You have received without paying, now give without being paid. In those readings, we hear the word of God. We're going to sing a song. This one is called, I Just Want to Be a Sheep. (laughs) If 
I just stand as If you're familiar with some of the stories in the Bible and Jesus' encounter with people, that song probably makes a bit more sense, but um, often, often the people Jesus criticized most were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the hypocrites, and they weren't all bad, all of those people, but um, Jesus definitely clashed with them and had some different views about them, so that, you know, that song is based on that. Right, well, thinking about our stories and our names, um, first of all, does um, I, I one day, and I've probably told this story in church before, but others haven't heard it, uh, one day when I was small and I was looking up in the back of our dictionary, because we didn't have Google back then, looking up in the back of the dictionary to see what my name meant, and it said Andrew, and I looked at my mum apparently with a disappointed face and said, and she said, what's the problem? And I said, well, it means mainly dim. Um, and she looked at it and said no no it means manly which is a bit better and then it listed the diminutives which are things like Andy and so on you know the different ways of saying it so um, and I was also interested to find out my dad told me that I was called Andrew because so although I'm I was born in Ireland my parents were both born in England and um, Cunningham is a Scottish name originally and so my dad said that the first Cunningham from our family to leave Scotland and move to London was called Andrew. So that's why he wanted me to be called Andrew. Uh, there you go. Does anybody know, um, firstly, the meaning of your name? And then maybe the story behind why you have that name? Anyone know the meaning of your name? Helen? I think it means light. You think it means light, okay. Helen thinks it means light. Very good. And do you know why you were called Helen? An Aunt Helen, okay. All right, anyone else? Margaret? Uh, my name means a pearl, I think, but I was named Margaret after a little deaf girl that my mother taught. 
Okay. So it means pearl. Yes. Pearl, as in what you find in an oyster. Yes. And uh, Margaret was named after a little a deaf girl that her mother taught who and really liked her. Emma. Uh, my name means um, grandmotherly or something like that. And uh, my parents chose my name because it was short and easy to spell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you didn't hear, Emma, maybe she thinks it means grandmotherly and it was, she, she was called that because it was short and easy to spell. Um, Charlie first, and then we'll get to you, Chris. Charlie? What was that? Free man, okay. Okay. Uphill. Sally, uh, Cassie's name before she got married, her surname was Uphill, which is obviously self explanatory. I really like my name. So this is Chris, Christopher. Christopher, bearer of Christ. Bearer of Christ, there we go. Do you know why you were called that? Okay. Um, mother and auntie decided they liked the name, and his eldest cousin was called Christine. So, yeah, in the family. Sometimes people don't like the names they've been given. Uh, sometimes we just put up with it. Sometimes people even change the names, don't they? And, um, but I have a list of names up on the screen, and these are all the people who I knew were reading in our service today, or most of them anyway. So we have Elizabeth Samuel Mackenzie Grace George Hannah and, and Douglas. Douglas is obviously the house that you all are in, some of you. And I have some meanings on the other side, but they're mixed up. The meanings are mixed up. So, for example, Elizabeth does not mean son of Kenneth. Can anyone guess what one might mean son of Kenneth? Mackenzie. Did you know Mackenzie means son of Kenneth? No. Now you know. <laughs> Now, I will say there's lots of, not everyone agrees on what names mean, so there may be other meanings out there. Um, anybody, Elizabeth, do you know what Elizabeth means? Um, I think maybe, um, no, but I think I know what Grace is. I think Grace, Grace gracious. Grace is gracious, that's right. So gracious, things given generously, blessings and so on. Um, Emma? Uh, does Elizabeth mean God has set or God has placed? No, Elizabeth does not mean God has set or God has placed, but I will tell you that that's what Samuel means. So um, you're asking about dark stream, yes? My God, my God is an oath. That's Elizabeth. Yeah, my God is an oath. So basically, God is my promise. God is a promise. God's true. Um, okay, so we've got Elizabeth so far, we've got Samuel, we've got Mackenzie, we've got Grace. George, what do we think George means? Anyone make a guess? Dark. It's not dark stream, no? Farmer. Farmer, yeah, farmer or earth worker is George. Hannah? Favor or Grace? So Hannah and Grace are actually pretty much the same. And Anne. Yes, that's right. So my daughter is called Hannah, but we were almost going to call her Grace because we, it was the meaning that was so important to us. Um, dark stream. Well, Douglas means dark stream, and that's because it's Scottish, and Scottish is a little bit like Irish, and so I, I can see the link in this. Uh, the Irish for black or dark is dove. I think of Dublin. Dublin literally means black pool. Lynn means pool. Douglas glass is a stream. It's a dark stream. That's where Douglas comes from. Put it onto the next page and you'll see they're all in the right order and hopefully we got it right. Okay, so that's what those names mean. On to the next one then. Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac are the people we heard about in our reading. Well, they're mixed up as well. So Abraham, what do you think Abraham means? Yep. Owen? Yeah, that's right. Owen, Abraham means father of many. Sarah means princess. princess, yes. And Isaac means he will laugh. Yes, on to the next one. We'll show you them as they are. Father of many, princess, and he will laugh. And in the Bible, a lot of the names have meanings which talk about their story and um, who, who it is that, the, that even um, what it is hoped that they will do with their life. My son is called Elijah. And Elijah means the Lord is God. 
And so um, my friend who did um, his service of blessing when he was born said that every time anyone says his name, they're declaring the Lord is God. And we thought, is it, we hadn't actually thought about it like that, but we thought, isn't that good? Um, so names, um, Connor, you can put it back to just the camera now. Names have so much meaning. And the story um, reflects, particularly for Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, the journey that they'd taken. It tells of a story of blessing and joy. It tells of a story of God's love, not just for that family, but for the whole world. And it tells of the, st the struggle of life. Because life and the story wasn't always easy for Sarah and Isaac. And we actually read how they waited a long, 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 long time before they had any children. Um, and it happened in the end. And the Bible is full of stories of people and their encounter with God. Some of the stories are quite beautiful and some of them are quite ugly. Um, but God is always there in the story. And so our names say something about us. And maybe your parents chose your name to say something about who they hoped you would be. Maybe they chose your name just because they liked it. They're all valid reasons. Um, but whatever you're called, your name now is a part of the story of your family, the story of your school, the story of your church, the story of God. And so today, too, our names may be in response to a story or a name that may be given to help us remember a story or a person. Does anybody know why Douglas House is called Douglas House? Oh, we have people. I'm going to ask if Helen will go first, because she, she. There was a Mr. Douglas. Yes. So. Did you meet Mr. Douglas? Yes. Yes, so you met, she met Mr. Douglas. I assume Barbara did as well. What do you know about, what do you know about Douglas? Yeah. He was. That's right. It's in your diaries at school. Okay, yes. Yep. And he was chairperson of the school council at PLC from 1932 to 1933. Um, and it says about him that he was a real gentleman. If you look on the school website, it says Mr. Douglas was a real gentleman. Um, I wonder what your story tells you or tells about God. It may be just a few words, as we did with our objects on the table at the beginning. It may be a whole book. Some people write whole books about their story and their story with God. And it may not even be words at all. It may be the things you do and the way you are. We're going to take some time now just to reflect on who we are in Christ. And this is where your little bits of paper and your person come into it. What's the most, the most important thing, I think, for all of us to remember <clears throat> is that God loves you. And no matter who you are, no matter what your life story is, God loves you. The church has sometimes made a bit of a mistake at times and tried, or sort of suggested that not everyone is loved equally by God. Or, you know, you hear, you hear at different times that there um, used to be some very angry preaching at, at times. But what we believe now is that God loves everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. You are, um, you are loved and blessed by God. And so you're chosen by God, you're God's treasure possession. And so what I want you to do now is holding that piece of paper, I just want you to reflect on who you are. Reflect on your story, the things that really excite you, the things that have made you sad over the years, and how that fits into God's story, God's story of how you're loved, how you're cared for. We're gonna to listen to a song as that happens and um, invite you, if you would like, just to bring that person forward. There's a cross up here, and you can put it just down there at the bottom of the cross as a sign of saying to God, God, thanks for loving me as I am, and I give myself to you. Um, you don't have to come up, up to you, but it's just a simple way of thanking God for who we are. Connor, there's a video that's going to come on now, if you'd put that on, and we're just going to have got about three minutes to sit and think about these things. Um, I th is it, 
Connor is the background music one muted. BGM. Ah, something's unplugged. <laughs> That's all right. We'll skip that. Let's not get. Um, I think it probably got unplugged at the jazz festival last weekend. There's a there's a loose cable around. Um, we'll get back to that. Well, what we're going to do then, we will um, we're going to sing a song together instead, which is Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. You're still welcome to come up during that and bring your little piece of paper. You can also do it at the end of the service if you prefer and come up then. And the children who are not uh, here as part of the school, who are primary age, are welcome to go out to Sunday school. Unless, um, and if, you're, if you're a younger sibling of a school person and you're not in school uniform and your parents would like you to go out, you can probably go out. But if you're in school uniform, I think you need to stay in here. <laughs> OK, so Sunday school for those primary school age children. We're going to sing.
a moment we're going to have a prayer to uh, ask God to bless the offerings that we bring. Traditionally in a church like this before COVID, we always used to pass a plate round. We don't do that anymore for COVID reasons because that means every person in the church gets to get whatever everyone else has got. Um, but there is a, and I just want to say as well, there's no obligation if you're here as a visitor today, there's no obligation for you. I don't feel any pressure to put any money in the plate. Um, but if you would like to at the door on the way out, there's a bowl and uh, you're very welcome to do that as well. We would appreciate it. Um, Elizabeth is going to come and say a prayer for our offerings. Thanks, Elizabeth. Lord Jesus, thank you that my story is part of your story and yours part of mine. Thank you that I can bring anything to you, joys and sorrows, highs and lows, and know that you care for me because I am your special treasure. We offer you all we are so that the story of your love can reach the whole world. Amen. Amen. So as we think about how we're connected together in this big story, we're just reflecting a little bit on what we heard in Matthew's gospel earlier about how Jesus said we're a bit like sheep without a shepherd don't know if any of you have sheep, um, but if they get out of their field and they don't have a shepherd to look after, they don't do very well, do they? They get lost, I think. And as uh, so Jesus said that we're like a sheep without a shepherd. And if you look at some of these other stained glass windows, there's more than one of them that has Jesus holding a sheep. And um, it was sort of one of, the, one of the big themes in the Bible that Jesus is our shepherd, the one who looks after us and, and guides us. But... One of the ways that Jesus and that God is with us is, is in the community that we're in. And we've heard about some of the hard things going on in our community at the moment, and we're, we pray for them. We know that in our own lives there may be some joys and some sadnesses that we share with each other, or even if we don't share all the details, we, we hold each other, we care for each other. What I want us to do, if you're, if you're willing, um, is to somehow connect to the person beside you. You can either hold their hand, or if you'd rather not hold hands, maybe this is a better way, is link arms or something like that. Um, if you're in the same household, um, probably you don't mind that much. And um, what would be even better would be if then each row could connect as well at one end, so that we're connected in a far bigger way. And then I'm gonna lead us in a prayer because I want us to think a little bit about how we're all connected um, and even if you're not able to hold the hand of someone beside you, if you'd rather not, or if you can't reach them, first of all, have a look around you. Consider the people, whether you know them or not. Focus on them, the people that we're connected to. And you know, if you are holding hands, or if you are linked in some way, you'll notice that if one person moves, it tugs you as well. If one person moves their arm, or moves their hand, it affects the person next to them. Because we're all actually in this together. Whether we're in the same school, whether we're in the same family, the same church, the same country, this planet, we are connected. So thinking of some of those things that we've heard about today, and some of the other things in the world that are going on, we are going to pray. And there's a, a response on the screen, which I invite you to say after, uh, after I read a couple of lines. And you'll see the response is, for this we give our thanks and praise. And I will leave some time of silence as well for us to uh, have our own uh, quiet prayers to God. Jesus, our good shepherd, you had compassion on all people. You healed and blessed them. We say together, for this we give our thanks and praise. Lord of the harvest, you saw people needed to hear good news of the kingdom. You sent the disciples on mission together. For this we give our thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, uh, Holy One, your spirit flows through us and between us together. For this we give our thanks and praise. God who keeps promises, you saw that we were like lost sheep you sent your son to save us together. For this, we give our thanks and praise. 
Well, let's be quiet for a moment to think about um, particularly those tragedies that Bev mentioned earlier on today, uh, those other people we may be grieving for, and situations in our own lives and in this world at large uh, that we are concerned about. Let's just be quiet and ask God to bless. for the person that you're connected to or the people that you're connected to at this very moment or sitting beside or looking at, whether you know them or not, ask God to bless them. God is here in this place and God goes with us wherever we go. We say together. For this we give our thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to sing our final song for today. And just as the musicians come up and get ready, I should have said earlier in the announcements, there is morning tea in the hall today. And you can get to the hall either by going through this door here on the left and follow the signs through, or you can go back out the front door and up the driveway and you'll see signs for uh, the parish centre. And so everyone is welcome to come and stay and have a chat. And I'm sure Helen and Barbara would be very pleased to have a chat with any Douglas students who would like to find a little bit about what PLC was like, did you say, 100 years ago, was it? <laughs> Not quite, OK. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so we're going to sing together now. I, the Lord of sea and sky, invite you to stand.
joy it ooh. What a joy it is to be able to have the children that I teach in Christian education, and I teach all the children in uh, the junior school at, at uh, Kinross, Walleroy, have them joined together in the church family here. A new tradition that I hope goes on for a long, long time. Uh, I'm so proud of all the children who took part today and spoke so well and rehearsed and got organised and... Uh, I would like us to actually congratulate these children if we could this morning. We have the joy of knowing Jesus Christ, the greatest name, and um, to be called his brothers and sisters, children of God. And so we share that beautiful family um, of being together. Let me close in prayer. Thank you, Lord God, that you call us your children. Thank you that um, you call us by name and that we are your sheep. You are our shepherd and you care for us. We ask your blessing on each one of us now and we pray as we go into this last week at school and other activities uh, that we have happening um, that we would be always aware uh, of your great love for us and help us to be able to carry your name into all that we do. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.